Let's keep getting ready, everyone. First team's going in 20. It all comes down to this. After two and a half seasons of being oppressed by the Saviors, Rick finally put an end to Negan's reign in the most cutthroat way possible. And a lot of it came from the comics. From the final standoff to Rick and Negan's battle to the ominous aftermath, consider this your spoiler warning. Let's break down how The Walking Dead Season 8 Episode 16 translates from panel to screen. The epic Season 8 finale of The Walking Dead, titled Wrath, was directed by visual effects master Greg Nicotero and written by Scott Gimple, Angela Kang, and Matthew Negri. Let's start with the lead up to the battle, which was almost completely different from the comics. In the show, Rick asks Sadiq about Carl's death, Morgan almost kills Alden and Henry, and Rick marches most of his people out of the hilltop to fight. They ambush the saviors, setting a trap for them. Morgan hallucinates Jared, while Tara and Alden wait for an attack on the hilltop. Also, Father Gabriel escapes Negan's road trip to the battle, but is quickly recaptured by Eugene. Aw, oh, poor Gabe. In the comics, Negan and Rick's battle actually occurs almost immediately after the fight at the hilltop. Negan never went missing and Simon and Jadis didn't exist. So if the show followed the source material exactly, this episode should have occurred right after 8.13. Also, none of that lead up at the sanctuary, drama with Eugene and Father Gabriel, or capture of Dwight happened in the comics. And he's gonna live with that. Now to the battle of the big boys. In the show, Rick and his allies follow a savior map to a large field where Negan and the saviors are waiting. Negan announces that he's ambushed their ambush and they're going to start things off by killing Father Gabriel. Oh no, but what's this? The savior's weapons all backfire, causing most of them to get maimed or killed. My God, Eugene rigged their freaking weapons. He's been on Rick's side the whole time. Gabriel lives and tackles an injured Negan with Dwight. It's not long until the saviors surrender, leaving Rick to deal with Negan. But don't underestimate Negan, who pounces on Rick and the two fight until Negan gets the upper hand. I am bigger, I am better, and I got a bad. We can have a future. Before Negan can kill him, Rick pleads to give him time to talk in honor of Carl. Negan considers it, and Rick uses the pause to slit his throat. Negan collapses, and Rick shockingly orders his people to save him. Save him. No! Maggie isn't crazy about the decision. No, he can't! In the comics, things were a bit different. For one, this whole sequence happens at the hilltop, not in a giant field. And Rick and Negan's fight occurs before the giant battle, not after. Here's how it went down. Negan shows up at the hilltop thinking most of the people, including Rick, have turned from the walker gut-laced arrows but Rick was hit by Dwight's clean arrow. So to Negan's surprise, Rick emerges and offers Negan the chance to just trade with each other so they live in peace. Negan actually considers it, and then, you guessed it. Despite having his throat cut open, Negan tackles Rick, grabs his leg, and breaks it before passing out. Seeing Negan down, Dwight declares himself the leader of the saviors while Rick instructs his people to save Negan. So Eugene's weapon rigging was unique to the show, Negan breaking Rick's leg was unique to the comics, while the rest of the events were mostly similar. But now let's tackle the aftermath. Aside from the half dozen storylines that were unique to the show getting wrapped up, the biggest comic comparisons came towards the end when Rick visits Negan at the infirmary. I save people. He and Michonne tell him how they plan to lock him up while they survive without him. A similar situation plays out in the comics, when Negan also woke up to find himself at the infirmary at the hilltop. What's different is that Rick's leg was broken, so he too wakes up in a hospital with a massive leg brace. He visits Negan with Michonne, Andrea, and Carl, who are both still around, to tell him that they're keeping him alive to show him how they can thrive without him. Also, that he's going to rot in jail for the rest of his life, but whatever. Besides the battle, Rick and Negan's fight, and the infirmary scenes, the show and the comic were pretty different from each other. In the comics, Carl's still alive, Carol and Morgan are long dead, Oceanside and Sadiq don't show up until years later, and Daryl, Jadis, Tara, Alden, and Henry don't exist. So the following plot lines are not in the comics. Rick and Sadiq's conversation, Morgan's attack of Henry and his subsequent trip to live at the junkyard, Father Gabriel's escape and recapture, the side attack on the hilltop, Rosita's post-battle trip to the sanctuary, Daryl and Dwight's closure, Dwight's visit to his old house, Maggie's secret plot, and of course, Rick's letter to Carl. I remember that feeling walking with you that day. I remember. Dad. And that wraps up our panel to screen comparisons for season eight. What did you think of the finale? Are you glad they stuck to the comic storyline and kept Negan alive? What do you think is next for season nine? Let us know in the comments below what you think. Make sure to like this video and subscribe to Skybound. We'll see y'all next time.